Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm from Quanta Cloud Technology, and I'm a part of Open Infra Team. And it is my honor to share our NFB infrastructure solution in this 5G ecosystem session. Here is a journey of what QCT has done from 2017 until now for Telecom's cloud native implementation. As you can see, we provide an end-to-end -end solution from the underlying NUMAT hardware support to the deployment and validation of the solution. And finally, we deliver a complete production grade reference architecture for our valuable customer. As mentioned earlier, the proposed solutions already provides a reference platform architecture and an optimized configuration model so that customers do not need to spend extra effort on platform architecture design, functional validation, and performance tuning. For a platform selection, we provide upstream Kubernetes and the commercial version of the OpenShift. For a platform deployment, we also provide an automatic deployment tool to automatic or manual deployment procedures so that customer can save more labor cost. And here, I will share about our cloud native platform, including the software building blocks, solution overview, and the system architecture. This is our solution building blocks. As you can see, the OpenShift runs on top of Kubernetes as a container application platform for the development, deployment, and management of applications and supports CSI, Rook service, and CNI, such as DVDK and SROV plugins. And we also Add on the CNB plugins, which is the container native virtualization, to run VN alongside with the container on the same platform to fulfill different types of workload. And the root framework as a self storage architecture to provide object, block, and file storage as a backend storage, which it enables this S3 based image registry per system volume and share file systems for the containers. This is the software stake of the QCT proposed OpenShare container platform. The proposed cluster includes one switch for the management network, two switches for the data network, three master and three hyperconverged worker nodes for the HE design, which is provides root safe storage to store the persistent data. The system architecture consists of three master nodes and three worker nodes with storage service. For networking, we logically divide the network into five types. Black line is the BNC network that isolate network used for switch and server hardware management. Blue line is the OpenShift SDN network. It's used for the public API, web interface, and exposed applications. Yellow line is the data plan network. It's used for Intel EPA feature, such as DVDK, SROV. Red line and green line are the self storage networks. To leverage a dedicated network architecture for OSD communication. In this section, I would like to share our solution performance review. This is the hardware selection for our OpenShift cluster. We adopt Conca Grade D52B1U as our master node server. It has flexible and scalable configuration for data center and allocate 632 GB of memory for each master machine. Since there are many extra management and monitoring service 
running in the OpenShift. The CPU we have the Intel Xeon Go 5218N. Network we use 110 gigabit NIC card for the network connection and manage it traffic in the cluster. And two 800 gigabit SSD use RAID 1 configuration to provide redundancy and for tolerance, which is used for OS installation and data storage. The worker node, considering the resource requirements for the telecom workloads, require better computing ability, more memory, and network card resource. We adopt contact rate D52BU2U as our worker node server. We use Intel Xeon Go 6252 and CPU we Intel SSTBF technology, which is designed for asymmetry workloads. Each machine is equipped with 12 32 gigabyte memory, which is shared by OS processing, workload, and storage service. The 10 gigabit NIC card is for the basic network connection. The two 25 gigabit NIC card is used for the data plan and storage network. As for the storage service, the D52BQ2U P2P SKU supports up to 16 2.5 inch SATA SAX disk and a 2.5 inch MVNE SSD in the front storage. The eval performance environment consists of Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform and Rook as a self storage orchestrator, Container Native Virtualization, which is a CMV, and Intel Enhanced Platform Awareness EPA in Kubernetes. And for the OS version and the kernel, OpenShift Master uses CoreOS as a um, best OS. And we adopt the worker with rail OS and it is required to update the kernel in order to support Intel SSC BF feature. For the test scenario, we illustrate the necessity of enabling SLVDP and OVS DVDK data plan acceleration technology for north south traffic and east west traffic to achieve light rate throughput performance. The two scenarios, single node server chaining and cross node server chainings, are conducted to demonstrate throughput performance improvement with EPA features and SSCVF enabled on the data plan network. And here, we use DRACE to generate the traffic, and DVDK TestVND is used for the packet forwarding. The survey chaining is a key approach of NFV, which enables flexibility, dynamic provisioning, and high availability for VNF and CNF deployments. To fulfill the network requirements of throughput sensitive workloads, we adopt SLVDP pasture technology for north south traffic, which flows to and from the end devices. OVS DVDK data plan acceleration for east west traffic, which flows across the chain service. With this design, the benefit from both SLVDP and OVS DVDK can be leveraged to achieve light rate performance and to balance the traffic loads between SLV NIC card and CPU resources used by the OVS DVDK PND. As you can see in the figure, the traffic generated by T-Rays flows through the SLV VF of the NIC car zero and directly pass through to part one. The traffic forwarding in each part is hosted by the DVDK TSVND application and the traffic redirection across paths on the host is defined by the open V switch float table. The traffic flow from the last path 
directly pass through to the SLVVF of the NIC card 1 and is sent back to the T-RIC server. Service stability is another challenge for running NFV workloads. By adopting VXLAN, the platform can provide a mechanism to transfer a layer 2 network packet across layer 3 networks for node-to-node -node communication. Hence, QCT simulates cross-node service chaining to demonstrate how the platform with Intel EPA and SSCBF enable can achieve optimal performance. The network topology in the cross-node scenario is similar to the single-node scenario. As you can see in the figure, the additional bridge BRPHY is built on the OpenShift worker nodes to connect the DVDK physical NIC with an assigned IP address and the RDA pole DVDK0 and the bridge BRPHY is bound to a specific PCI device when open this switch is run in the user space. The remote IP is assigned on the bridge BR0 for adding pole VX1 as a destination host IP address which is allow each TSPND application on two hosts to communicate over the VXLAN channel. In order to gain a better network performance, we reserve and isolate eight identify high priority cords from kernel scheduling with system interruption. Then ping them each to OVS DVDK PND3 manually and config them to a higher frequency, which is the 2.8 GHz through Intel SSTBF enablement. As for the low priority cores, we assign two isolate cores to each test PND application. The first and the second cores are assigned to the host process. And the low priority core frequency is config to a lower frequency, which is the 2.1 GHz for performance optimization purpose. We have the same configuration for both hyperthread sibilants to get our expected results. In a single node scenario, the test case include two path, four path, and six path service chaining for both SSTBF enable and disable. The throughput performance in single node service chaining are compared in million packet per second and gigabit per second. As you can see, when the packet size is larger than 128 bytes, the light rate performance either with SSCBF enable or disable are achieved in all numbers of parts. However, compared with the platform with SSTBF disable, in 64 bytes, the throughput performance with SSTBF enable is improved, ranging from 18.5% to 21.3%. In 128 bytes, the throughput performance is improved ranging from 17.1% to 19.8%. In each test case, the maximum throughput is measured and PND cores on the host are 100%. In the cross node scenario, test PND parts are evenly deployed on the two hosts. That is, in the two parts, four parts, and six part test case, one part, two part, and three parts are respectively allocated in each OpenShift worker nodes. As you can see, when the packet size is larger than 128 bytes, the platform with either SSTBF enable or disable can achieve near light rate performance for all numbers of parts of service chaining. Compared with the platform we SSCBF disable, when the packet size is larger than 128 bytes, the throughput performance we SSCBF enable 
in the six-part test case is signly improved ranging from 0.6% to 0.73%. In 64 bytes, the throughput performance with SSC BF enable is improved ranging from 18.31% to 19.83%. In 128 bytes, the throughput performance with SSC BF enable is improved ranging from 60% to 16.84%. To conclude, based on the test result, QCT validated the platform to efficiently provide accelerated digital transformation and highly optimized resource utilization. Thank you for listening. To access the full presentation, please visit our website.